Hey guys, Steve from Flight Brothers, and today I'm taking a look at the SP3 Diatone VTX OSD all-in-one stackable combo. It's a great product, but I've heard that a lot of people are struggling to connect them. So if you've never connected a OSD uh, to a flight controller before, it might be a little confusing at first, and there's one little pitfall that most people have. But I want to go over that real quickly with a couple of different flight controllers so you can understand how this works. Before I do that, just real quick, powering the SP3. It's pr quite simple. First of all, the cables that come with the, uh, with the SP3 are nice silicone wires, so these great uh, new clips that are they actually clip in really well. They're a lot sturdier than the regular uh, micro JST connectors, so I like them a lot. But they're nice, they're labeled for us. VTX video signal input and power wire. So that one plugs right into here. Now, what wires are you going to use? Well, let's take a look at this chart to explain it. On the back you have video in, so that is the usually white yellow wire from your camera, video in from the camera. Ground, this is the ground wire from your camera. Now you have a couple of decisions to make. Do you want to use 5 volts for your camera, or do you want to use the same voltage that's being supplied to your VTX? If you're supplying your VTX with 12 volts regulated, which I highly recommend, you might be able to use this as a 12 volt source out to your camera. If you're providing your VTX with battery voltage, let's say you fly 4S like most people are doing on their quads these days, the 4S will be passed through this one to the camera. So your choices are, are to power your camera with either the regulated 5 volt out or whatever voltage is being supplied to the VTX from this pin here. So you have to decide which is best suited for your application and use whatever wire works. A ground on this side is for the power coming in and this last pin is the power coming in. So what does that look like here? Well, the picture is a little confusing but we are definitely looking at it from the right direction here. So I wish they had labeled the picture so you could tell 100% you're looking at it the right way, but the connectors can only be a certain way. So if we're looking at this this way, we're looking at the white wire being your video in. So it's nice they coded that one separately. All the black wires are grounds. The red wire here is your five. Let me get that in focus for you. The red wire here is a 5 volt out to your camera. Red wire here is VCC or whatever battery voltage or input voltage is. And then this wire is the one that powers it. So if you start with that, you can get this thing powered correctly. And that's going to at least get you a working VTX and working video. But everybody wants the SP3 for the OSD feature. So let's talk about how that gets hooked up to your flight controller. So I have on hand a couple of different flight controllers with me to show you exactly how to hook them up. I have the new Diatone D-Link F3 flight controller PDB in one. I have a standard NAS Rev6. I don't know if anyone's still using these out there, but I had one on hand, so I figured what the heck. I know there are a lot of Diatone customers using the Diatone Thin Nays, so I have one of those on hand to show you. And I have a Furious FBV Combini, or Combini. I don't know how you say it. Whatever you say it, it's a great flight controller. So, how do we hook this up? Well, let's go back to the SP3 for a second and look at the OSD data cable. So here we have the OSD data cable. It plugs into the side right next to the label. Now these are two different sizes, so you can't really mess that up, but here we go. Now, what do we have here? Looking at our chart again that comes with the thing. We have ground. So you do want to connect that ground to ground on the flight controller just to be sure that the OSD has the same ground as everything else. Will it work without it? Maybe, but 
didn't just use it. NC, that one's throwing everybody off. Listen, NC means not connected. You do not use that wire. Pull it off. I don't even know why they included it. Don't use it. TX, RX, transmitted data, received data, RSSI. You're only going to use RSSI if your receiver, your uh, control receiver, has its own RSSI output that you'd like to go into this. A lot of times, RSSI data will be sent to the flight controller, and that RSSI data will be received by the OSD via the receive data thing from the flight controller. So you might not need that or you might want to use it. It depends on your setup. You're going to have to figure out what you would have, what you need and use it. In my case, my receiver uses channel 9 as RSSI data, which I program into Betaflight and it receives that data from my UART port from the flight controller. Now, here is the other big thing that people mess up. The TX on the OSD, that's transmitting data, data that's transmitted from the OSD. So the TX is transmitting to the flight controller. That means the TX on here needs to be connected to the RX on the flight controller. Transmitted data from the OSD needs to go to receive data on the flight controller okay and since this is to receive data for the OSD it needs to receive the data that the flight controller is transmitting TX of the flight controller connects to RX on the OSD so what does that look like in practice Let's first go back old school. Here's a traditional NAS Rev6 board. We know that the USB port shares UART1. That's true on a lot of flight controllers. USB shares UART1. But this flight controller only has two UART ports. One of them, the UART2, is shared with your PPM rail on this side of the board. So you can see it says U2 RX U2. Actually, I believe number uh, three should say U2 TX and number four should say U2 RX. I'm not sure exactly why that's labeled wrong, but nevertheless, that's for UART2 in this case is made for your serial receiver. If you're using S bus or I bus or whatever bus, your receiver is going to go into that port, so you do not have access to UART2 for your OSD data. So where do you hook up your OSD? Well, look at these two dots right here. Let's see if I can get any closer for you. U1TX, U1RX. So that's for UART1. It's shared with the USB, but as long as you're not using the USB, it'll send data to your OSD. So the U1TX would go to the OSD RX, and the U1RX would connect to the SP3 OSD TX. That's how you're going to get the data to transmit. Now, as the case may be with this Rev6 uh, NAS, and I will say it now because it's the same with the thin NAS, if you're using UART1, you cannot use the USB and power the OSD at the same time. It'll scramble your data signal, and you won't be able to connect to either unit. Now, the way to get around that with these two flight controllers is simple. Whenever you're providing power to the SP3 and you're trying to use the USB, like, for instance, trying to calibrate the ESCs where you have to power up the whole quad, simply disconnect the data cable from the SP3 while you're using it 
and you should be fine. You could, if it's hard to get to, disconnect the power from the SP3 as well, and that's going to do this, have the same effect. As long as the SP3 is not powered on and you're trying to use the USB on UART1 of your flight controller, if they're shared, like on the Rev6 or the Thin Nays, then you'll be fine. So, what about some other flight controllers? Well, the Diatone D-Link F3. This flight controller has three different UART ports. It has UART1, which is shared with the USB out, which is right here. It has a little adapter. It has UART3, which is typically what you're going to use for your serial receiver for SBUS or IBUS. But it also has this plug here. This plug is UART2. So if you have your little jack that comes with it, plug it into UART2. And then you're going to use, again, the TX from the flight controller goes to the RX on the SB3 and the RX from the flight controller is going to go to the TX of the SB3 and there's even a ground in that harness for you to use. How about the Combiney? The Combiney also has three UARTs and UART1 is not attached to the USB, which is quite nice. So if you're going to use Combiney, you usually will use UART3 again for your serial receiver for SBUS, but you have the options for UART2 or UART1, which can be found on this rail over here. It's going to be very difficult for you to see that text. I don't think I can get it to focus on there. Let me see. Well, not quite, but uh, if you could see it, it would explain, there you go, exactly where you are in RX and TX for two. So you can see that the ground is this rail here and this rail here, these two. The five volt is actually the second one in on both sides and then you can see that TX1 and or TX2 and RX2 are right here TX RX or you have TX and RX1 up here TX and RX1 you also have RX3 for your serial receiver on this rail. So all of your UART ports are located on here. There's also a direct port that's meant for the Piggy OSD up here. And that port can also be used. Um, I'm unsure if that's on UART1 or UART2. I think that is actually on UART2 um, with the TX and, and RX coming out of here. So um, I can't say that for 100% sure, but just so you know. The last thing to show you is an F3 flight controller. I don't have one out right now, but I have this one inside this build. On the F3 flight controller, UARTs are really nice and easy to get to. They're all on these white connectors around the USB port. I might be wrong, so double check your uh, your diagram or it's labeled on the board and I just can't see it inside the frame here. But I believe this one to the left of the USB port is UART2. So if you use that plug and hook it up to the RX of the UART2 to the TX of the OSD and the TX of the UART2 to the um, RX of the OSD, you will be sat now. There's one last detail to make this work. You have to enable the UART port within Betaflight. It's very simple. Let me just take a quick screenshot and show you what I mean. Let me go up to the computer and we'll finish this up. Okay, to connect your OSD in Betaflight, it's very simple. First, connect and then you're going to want to go to the configuration tab. I'm sorry, the ports tab. In the ports tab, you see your UART connections. This is an F3 flight controller, so there are three UART connections. UART 1 is always sending data because that's connected to the USB port. 
If you are using a Rev6 NASE or the Thin NASE or any um, flight controller that only has two UARTs, you don't have to change anything in here because you'll be using UART1 and it's already enabled right there. If you're using something like the D-Link F3, a Combine-E, or an F3 flight controller, or any controller where there's more than one, more than three or two UART ports, then you need to enable the one you're using. Like I said, most of the time you're going to use UART2. So if you want data to be sent out of the UART2 port to your OSD, you need to enable it by clicking on it there. That will allow you to send data to your OSD and that data will display on your camera view. If you don't enable that, and of course you need to hit save and reboot in order to save that. If you don't enable that, your OSD will not receive any data and you won't get anything on your dis display. So it's really important to know which UART you are connecting to for your OSD and make sure that in this ports tab it's configured so that data will be sent to it. UART 3 in this case is set up to be serial RX because I use it with an IBUS serial receiver, which is why that's connected. You cannot use a UART port for both data and serial RX. In fact, if you enable both and try to save it, it will cancel out all your settings. See it rebooted and they disappeared? You can only enable one or the other. So for your OSD UART2, if you're using UART2, and your serial RX for your receiver is on UART3. Of course, whatever way you hook it up, you just need to enable the correct ports for the correct information that you want to send. Save and reboot, and you'll be ready to go. So that wraps up this little video on the SP3 uh, Diatone OSD VTX. I hope it was helpful to you. Um, please let me know if you have any questions. You can leave them in the comments here, or you can message our Facebook page. It's facebook.com slash flight brothers. Remember, spelled it an I-T-E, not G-H-T. Uh, you can find us there. Message us on Facebook. I will happily get back to you uh, as quick as I can to help you out with this. Uh, it is a great product, guys. I've been flying it for a few weeks now on my... Uh, oh, sorry about that on my uh, Crusader GT2. It's mounted in there. It's a great uh, frame and the SP3 with the OSD information has been working flawless in there. I really appreciated uh, the quality of it and the way it's held up. So um, try it out. I hope you can figure out how to get it hooked up. Just remember NC is not connected and TX to RX, TX to RX, and you'll get it right. Um, I appreciate so much your uh, watching. Like and subscribe for more videos like this. And as always, we'll catch you next time.